it's the middle of April and it's time to open up the chicken coop, check things out from the past winter, and it's also time to introduce the uh, chicks to the hen house so they can start to get acclimated. Now it's not too bad looking. I've seen far worse. We're going to take out this ramp. And we're going to take out this one. And then I have this partition right here that I made. So the, the new chickens will go on this side. The old chickens will have access over here. And it divides the uh, food and water trays so the baby chicks can get their food. And the adult hens won't eat it all. So that's in there nice and tight. And I have a little access door here so the chicklets can get inside. So this is going to be their new home, they just have to kind of get used to it. And they have water on this side, food over on that side. So it looks like they found where the food is. Now I do have some water back there, but I'm going to put a, another bowl of water out here to make it a little bit easier for them. But this is the second year I've had this hen house. It's heated with some ceramic, ceramic heaters on both sides. I have a little controller up inside there. So we're going to give this a quick inspection and see how everything has turned out. But so far, so good. Now this hen house was not built, well, with regular wood. But whether it's, it's a hardboard on this side and a piece of hardboard on this side with one inch of insulation sandwiched in the middle, at the price of lumber nowadays, lumber is just so outrageous. But I thought I'd try something new, but it looks like it's turned out pretty good. And down in the second door, this is where they get all the food. There, and there, and the water just pops out here with this little funnel. And I can go ahead and fill the trough up below. But, but the walls are looking good, no sign of warpage. Doesn't look like any moisture is getting in, other than the inside needs to be cleaned. And this is my little automatic door opener that I designed so I don't have to get up in the mornings and open the doors for the chickens. But it looks like they're fairly content. And so we're going to leave them here behind the cage, uh, separated from the, the older hens for about two or three weeks. And then we'll go ahead and open the hen house to the rest of them. One of the problems with introducing new chicks into a hen house is they generally stay where they feel safe. And so even after I remove this uh, little containment area, these chicks will continue to huddle down in this area. It'll probably be afraid to go up into the roost 
sometimes they'll go into the laying compartment to, because they think it's safe and sometimes I have to shoo them out of there so it's just one of the deals with having chickens and dealing with their behavior so the ramps are back in place for the older chickens and so far so good I've enjoyed raising chickens I've been doing it now for about 15 years and I've lost several to hawks to foxes and raccoons but all in all I've enjoyed it now there's one drawback with having the chicks confined in here is they they can't get out of the hen house and go into the grove or under bushes to cool down uh, I do have a, a fan back there in the corner that's attached to a thermostat switch so if the heat gets hot higher than 74 degrees that fan will turn on and I will also supply them with some secondary water so just in case they get hot and thirsty they can still cool down so I'll have to monitor the temperature of these chicks and make sure that they stay nice and cool and healthy there's been a lot of news lately about chickens concerning the bird flu which is really called avian influenza or HPAI uh, some of the signs concerning bird flu is going to be respiratory issues gasping and I don't know how you tell if a chicken is gasping or not but one of the large signs is uh, digestive system problems and that's basically they say that birds with uh, bird flu will have severe diarrhea and one of the issues with avian influenza is also rapid death and because chickens die so quickly it's rare for infected eggs to get into the food chain and according to the FDA uh, as long as you cook your eggs uh, it, there shouldn't be a problem some of the symptoms that chickens will often demonstrate will be they'll have uh, swelling around the necks around the head and particularly in the eye the carriers for bird flu are primarily waterfowl and shorebirds uh, those are natural hosts and these particular species rarely die from bird flu so they're the primary carrier so in a sense ducks geese and other waterfowl are like the typhoid Mary to bird flu other symptoms that are common with bird flu are going to be nervous system problems uh, the, ch the chickens will often have tremors their necks will begin to twist their uh, wings will become paralyzed and often they'll lay down uh, onto the dirt and start kicking or bicycling their legs now some of the issues with hens they say that hens will become depressed and I don't know how you figure out if a hen is depressed or not but that's one of the signs ruffled feathers is also a sign of bird flu but that almost seems almost natural for birds they'll be quiet they'll be quieter than usual and one of the big telltale signs is that their combs which are normally red will become purple and dry the best way to avoid bird flu in your flock is a few things you can do one if you have bird feeders or in and around your house you might want to remove them because other birds can also transmit avian flu if you have a practice of feeding your birds outside you might want to stop that and just keep their feed inside away from other birds avoid visiting streams and ponds where geese or ducks may congregate because those are the primary carriers of bird flu and if you get any of their feces on your feet and you bring and you track that home to your uh, backyard crop you can actually infect them from cross-contamination overall you want to avoid any contact with migrating birds so if you see migrating birds in freshly plowed fields stay away from them if you see migrating birds in or around your property shoo them away now it's not my intent to scare you or put fear into you about bird flu and your backyard uh, chickens but it's something to be it's something to keep in you know in, in the back of your mind you want to keep your birds healthy and safe so basically you want to quarantine them 
from any other bird species as much as possible. I'd like to thank you for your time. Please subscribe. I appreciate any comments and we'll send you another video your way as soon as possible. Thank you.